So unfortunately, it's no secret that the divorce rate in our Muslim community is on the rise and has been for some time. As divorce and marital unhappiness becomes more prevalent, it's increasingly important for families, couples, and individuals to learn relationship skills. Why is it that we require training, learning, for everything we want to do in life except for marriage? Why is it that if you want to go into any profession, there's education, university degrees, some kind of training? You even need training to work in a fast food restaurant. But no one is taught relationship skills, even though our relationships are half of our deen, even though we spend our entire lives in relationships with different people. When we're born, we're in a relationship with our families, our parents, our siblings, our aunts, our uncles, our cousins, our community. And then we get married, and we're in a relationship with our spouse. And we're in that relationship for about 40 to 60 years. So how is it that we don't learn the proper tools, the proper skills to navigate in our relationships? Inshallah, today, I would like to share with you, I would like to teach each and every one of you one skill that will drastically improve the quality of your relationship and your overall happiness, inshallah. When researchers studied couples to see what made relationships successful and what didn't, they discovered something very interesting. So they would take couples, mostly newlyweds, and they would put them in a room, and in that room they would have cameras everywhere, speakers, and they would actually monitor their blood pressure, their heart rate, they would also take blood and urine samples uh, before and after. And so after all of this research, when they tried to study couples to see what made relationships successful and what didn't, they discovered something very interesting. And that is that couples who paid attention to their spouses bid for connection. Now, a bid for connection is any gesture, whether it's verbal or nonverbal, that one spouse does to get the attention of the other spouse. And bids show up in simple, and not so simple ways. It could be something like a passing comment or a wink or something more direct like a question. And so the couples that were happy and happily married when they went through their lives did something very interesting. The researchers noticed that these couples noticed these bids and responded to these bids that their spouse made at least 86% of the time that they were made. And then they found, on the contrary, those who were unhappily married or divorced only on average responded to those bids for connection 33% of the time. And so one of the secrets to a happy and fulfilling marriage is turning towards your spouse instead of turning away. So what is turning towards and what is turning away? Turning towards your spouse is simply responding in any way, even in the most simplest of ways, to your spouse. For example, a wife might be doing the dishes, and there's a window in front of her, and she notices a beautiful bird. And she goes, Jano, 
look at that beautiful bird. Isn't it pretty? And the husband is on his laptop working or distracted with the TV or on his phone. He has two options. He can either stop what he's doing for a second, look up and say, mashallah, yeah, it is pretty, and go back to what he's doing, and that is what we call turning towards, or he can ignore that, continue doing what he's doing on his phone, laptop, or watching the TV, and that is what we call turning away, not responding to that bid to get the attention. And so, this research is really incredible because it suggests that there is something that you and I can start doing today that will dramatically change the course of our relationships. And more importantly, it lets us know that there is something that we cannot do that will cause our relationships to deteriorate, right? And our relationships are what? Does anybody know the dua that I recited in the beginning? It's a beautiful dua that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala teaches us in the Quran, in Surah Furqan. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in that section talks about Ibadur Rahman the servants of the most gracious, the most merciful. And he lists qualities that these awesome, beautiful, amazing servants have. One of those qualities is that these people, they make dua and they say, رَبَّنَا هَبْ لَنَا مِنْ أَزْوَاجِنَا وَذُرِّيَّاتِنَا كُرَّةَ أَعْيُنْ وَجْعَلْنَا لِلْمُتَّقِينَ إِمَامًا O our Lord, gift us. Heb lana. And that's very, very profound that they use the word hiba because hiba is a gift. They're calling their spouse and their children gifts from the most merciful, right? And so this suggests that there's something that you can do to not take care of this gift that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave each and every one of us. And so that's huge because not only does our mental and social well-being depend on this skill, but also our spiritual well-being and our hereafter. Because our spouses and our children and our family members, they're gifts from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And when Allah gives us a gift, what does he ask us to do with it? Take care of it, right? We didn't really need all of this modern research and we didn't need marriage therapists to study relationships for the past 40 years for them to tell us this. Why? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also says in the Quran that he sent for us a human, the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, as the most perfect and beautiful role model for both men and women. And guess what? The Prophet وسلم, was a master at turning towards these bids for connection. And I just wanted to end by sharing three beautiful examples of how the Prophet وسلم, turned towards instead of away. The first example I want to share with you is a super subtle example. So once Aisha radiallahu anha, the wife of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, looked out the window from their apartment. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, noticed her looking out the window. She didn't say a word. And he said to her, Oh Aisha, do you want to watch the Abyssinians? She didn't even have to say anything. And she said, Yes, Ya Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And so he held her so that her face was touching his face and her body was behind him. And after a few minutes, he said, have you had enough watching? She said, no. So he continued holding her and standing in that place to allow her to watch. And later on, she actually says that she had no desire to watch them play. She just wanted to be close to the Prophet 
most of the times, these bids, they don't want anything except for your attention. They're attempts to get your attention, to get some kind of positive attention from you. The second beautiful example from the life of our beloved Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam went to Aisha one time and he said, Oh Aisha, I know when you're happy with me and I know when you're not so happy with me. And she said, Ya Rasulullah, no, 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 like I don't do anything, you know. Um, how could you know that? And look how he noticed. He said, when you're happy with me, you swear by the Lord of Muhammad. You say, Warab Muhammad. And when you're not so happy with me, you say, Warab Ibrahim. You swear by the Lord of Abraham. Look at how much the Prophet is paying attention that he could notice that one word difference. The Prophet ﷺ was the most beautiful example for us. And Allah says that if we want Allah to love us and we want Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive our sins, what must we do? In kuntum tuhibbun Allah fattabi'uni yuhbibkum Allah. If you really love Allah and you want Allah to love you, then follow the Prophet ﷺ and Allah will love you and forgive your sins. Now last but not least, and this is one that was not so subtle, a more direct. Um, Aisha radiallahu anha would ask the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam periodically, Ya Rasulullah, how's our not? And that was their code language for their love. And he would say, our not is like a love and it's as tight as it was the first time I met you. Isn't that beautiful? sallallahu alayhi wa sallam.